Hi, this is video 3.2, your full proposal for week three of the ISTF chapter funding workshop. Now, what we're covering in this week, Daniel has already covered letters of intent or letters of interest. This presentation is on your full proposal, an overview on it. In the third presentation, we'll look more specifically at in further de detail on developing your work plan, activities, and desired outcomes. Then in the fourth presentation, we'll cover in more detail your budget and budget justification for your proposals. So in the full proposal, again, the things we're wanting to include in a general way are the problem to be solved and the background for that problem, the goals and the smart objectives, the theory of change, activities and outcomes, that will be covered in the third um, presentation for this week, budget in the fourth presentation for this week, timeline we've already talked about, and evaluation will um, be covered in week five. So the format of funder, whether it's an embassy or another funding organization, they vary from organization to organization. Sometimes it's a letter of intent, a short letter of intent, and then an invitation to submit a full proposal. Sometimes the funder would like a full proposal right away. In this presentation, we're going to look at the requirements of a couple of embassy calls for full proposals. Now, whoever the funder is or embassy is, you want to meet, help them meet their goals. So you need to read the funder's website. What are the stated goals of that organization? How will your particular project support those goals? What kinds of projects are they funding? So read the program you are applying for carefully and then understand what the purpose is of that particular program under that funder. How will your project support the purpose of that particular program? Check the requirements carefully. And then after you've done that, follow the instructions to the T and make sure you meet all the requirements. Don't leave anything out. So let's consider the first example then, the US Embassy self-help programs, particularly for the country of Guinea. And the full description is available at this link. I'm just giving you the overview of what the requirements are so you can see how it varies some from what we've talked about already, but it incorporates many of the things we've talked about. Now, these um, proposals are rather involved. They're for a small amount of money, five to $10,000. And you need to read the project, the, the program description to find out what kinds of projects will be funded and what kind will not, not be funded. The first thing they have is a series of mandatory forms that are mostly about the budget details. Then there is a summary page where you give them some information about yourself as the applier. Then the proposal itself has a maximum of about seven pages. And many of these components we've already talked about. Um, the short, a short summary of what the proposal is about overall an introduction to the organization or the individual who is applying for the funding, a clear statement of the problem that needs to be addressed, the goals and objectives you want to achieve in relation to that problem, the activities you want to carry out to achieve those objectives, then talk about the program methods and design. This is your approach to solving the problem and it moves over into the idea of the theory of change and logic models. So also you need to include a timeline on how you will carry out your activities. Then a short bit on the key personnel who will be involved in the project and something on the program partners if other organizations will be at partnering for the project. And monitoring and evaluation this is very important so that you are keeping track of how you're doing in achieving your objectives. 
They also want to know about the future funding for the sustainability of your project beyond the period that they will be providing money. And the budget justification narrative, explaining in more detail why you need each of the things you're requesting in the budget. In addition, they want a one-page CV on the key personnel. They want letters of support from the partners who will be helping carry out the project and maybe even official permission letters for carrying out the activities. So that's from the US Embassy um, for one particular country for small grants program. Here's our second example for the Australian Embassy Direct Aid Program to Zimbabwe, which you can find in detail at this link. I'm just again going to cover general, a general picture on it. This application is simpler than the US Embassy self-help program, but it's for more money, $45,000. However, the awards are limited in number. So here's some, and then Australia Embassy has, and the US Embassy, they've got programs, similar programs for other countries. I'm just giving you examples for one country for each. So some of the questions that the embassy, the Australian direct aid program will ask are, what are your key achievements to date for your organization? A short description of the pro program, that project you want to carry out, the budget you want to request and quotes for the things you want to purchase. Then what are other sources of funding from other donors that you might be using also for carrying out this project? So, and then, problem statement, why this work needs to be done, what are the planned activities, what are the expected outcomes, how will you know if you've achieved those outcomes, evaluation again, then in considering this time of COVID-19, what kind of challenges does COVID present for your project and how can you work around them? Then who will benefit from the project? and explain how the project will be sustainable after the funding period ends. Then um, also they'd like you to do a little bit of promotion for Australia having provided you funding for your project. Now there are other embassies with other small grants programs. One of them is here for Canada at this link. This is another example. And then there are another number of other embassies given here that you might check. Now it's difficult to find the exact information in a big list at one website for all these countries um, under one embassy. So you have to search individually for your country with each donor. And I suggest an internet strategy like this. Small grants, then put the donor country, then embassy, then the name of your country. And I hope that find, helps you find one or more programs from one of these embassies that might fit your, your needs. So in, in, in conclusion, don't be discouraged. Keep in mind that most proposals are not funded. And if they're not funded, well, if you're not funded, you can ask them maybe why you weren't funded. Maybe they'll give you a critique. And sometimes you can fix the problems and resubmit, or you can take your proposal to another funding organization. So here's some references that might help you find that funding for small grants at different embassies. And our homework for you then is to please locate an embassy small grant program for your country, for yourself as an individual or for your ISTF chapter. And these pages here in this presentation will give you some help. So thank you and we'll see you in the next video.